But before that, we'll give you a little taste of what our 9s, 10s, 11s are. Um, so we don't need the foam roll for this. We want it. Stage. Then we're, we're, we're going upstairs. We're looking at overhead squats. We're looking at overhead ball squats. The overhead ball squat is a nice exercise, but if you're a young boy growing up, you're going to be a little bit dumb for many reasons. And it's cool. Walk like this. You've been on the couch with that next to your girlfriend. And then you come in and we've asked you to do this. Okay? You might have that function. So sometimes this can be a bit narrow. This can be a little bit difficult. Okay? So that's where the overhead room head handle squat can be better. Um, I want everyone. Actually we're gonna we run down, we've got to run down and get some more med balls. I want everyone to try the overhead ball squat. I just want to show you squatting patterns. Okay. Traditional, traditional overhead squat was taught for Olympic lifting. So the bar should be at the crease of your hip. The stick should be at the crease of your hip. We don't squat. We don't squat like this. Why don't we squat with narrow feet? And that was always a... Uh, I got asked that by a, what I would consider an experienced strength and conditioning coach at a conference last year. He asked me. We're talking about sports specificity. Why don't we squat like this? Why don't we squat like this? Because we run like this. Our feet are never wide than our hips when we run. And I can see where you're coming from, <laughs> but why do we squat in the gym? So we develop strength and power in our legs, and you want to do that safely. And the safest, most natural way, because we're not built like the Ken and Barbie dolls, where our legs go up underneath us and into a little hole. Our hips come in from the side. We have to open up our hips in order to create proper range for us to squat. That is safe, effective, will develop the strength in that plane. Okay. If we start squatting like this, it's very, very, very hard and you're going to have very bad knees, ankles and hips. Okay. So we're looking at overhead squat. Head is up, chest is out, 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock, just outside shoulder width. I want you to push the stick into the air and pull it apart. Try and pull the stick apart. That engages the upper back, upper traps, head up. And we're just going to do 5 squats. 5 squats up and down. 
Now, if you think you're doing it right, you need to push your knees out even more. Open up those knees. Not your feet, not your feet, your knees. Open your knees. Boy, keep your weight. Push through your heels, push through your heels. Big chest. Up, keep your head up, don't mind me. Up, push. Good boy. Up, good. That's traditional squat. Then we put a barbell up, then we let it do the snatch. So we need the, that range. When we screen, it's different. FMS. 90 degrees, pop it overhead, toes, shoulder width, slightly turned out. That's a different story, okay? That is a different story. Practice them all. So you get good at them all, it's no problem. Then we know this, then we go training back. I'm talking now, 12 up. Our squatting progressions are getting better. I'm now up with a barbell on my back, okay? In a squat rack, I teach them from day one how to use a squat rack. If you're using a, even a training bar, day one, unless I'm cut for space and I brought them downstairs to the sports hall or to the Astro. But from day one they learn to use that rack. Because that's their safety tool. If they don't have a rack, two boys pop the barbell up. Even if it's the 7 kilo barbell. I don't want anyone doing this. Because that just becomes crazy. Okay, as weightlifters we do it from a platform. But we'll do that nice and safe and we're strong. Young boys get two buddies, it's good practice. You just lift up the little barbell and step in. They get used to then setting straight away. Okay? So, once you go on to overhead squat, then we go on to front squat. You can't really do front squat with a stick. Why? Just too light, yeah. Some exercise you need a little bit of resistance to teach it. Um, now, some guys go, oh, I just can't do a front squat anyway, I'm so strong here. <laughs> the super heavyweight weightlifters' arms are as big as my thighs, and they can do this. That is pure and amazing. That's all that is. Oh, just, yeah. Done the guns, man. I can't do front squat. Doesn't suit me. Let's start doing this one. That's fine. That's fine. That's not what we want to do if we're teaching the lifts, the Olympic lifts down the road. Stretch out your lats, stretch out your uh, triceps, work on your function upstairs. Wrists are killing me. They spend ages stretching the wrists. Because if your elbows are down, that's where the bar is. It needs to be on the shelf. But what we do teach the stick is zombie squat. Just for posture. We put a stick across here, and now we're zombies. And we just Stand up and down, trying to keep the stick up, chest up. Okay, and that teaches nice posture for the squat. You'll have a little pain in your lower back if you do this correctly. Big chest, as you sit down, big chest. Zombie squat, reach out like a zombie. Big chest. Boy, you loosen up, good. Stand up, relax, boom. You put a barbell in that position with 20 kilos each side, I don't care how strong your athlete is, that zombie squat will test their spinal line, don't care how strong you are. If you're having trouble with an athlete, you hurt your wrist or something, and you can't, oh, I can't squat. Leg press is okay, no. Get them on zombie squats. Postural alignment, core, core training, will be phenomenal. These guys here screaming at you to keep that posture, okay? So there's your squatting progression. Okay, you're in a gym, you're in a pitch, you don't have anything. You have a broomstick, you might have, you might have a few bands. By the way, as a strength and conditioning tool, these have become very cheap uh, compared to what they were. My, I bought my first set of bands, I think, back in 2000. And I spent ridiculous money, like 120 pounds or something on a few bands. Now they've become really, really cheap. And these are so useful. So useful. And they fit in, fit in a bag. Go to the Junior World Cup. It's different than Senior World Cups. I didn't know what gym I'd have. I had a rough idea. It wasn't great. I brought a travel on bag full of bands and I got a lot, a lot of work done. Because even if you have a bit of weight, you can always add resistance with these. And they also can be used for assistance exercise. So now we're going to do, who wants to, we're going to do the, uh, what we call the X-band squat. So we've got, we're out on the pitch, we want to progress this. Okay, we've done our broomstick, we've done our med ball squat, now I'm out of med ball. But I want to get a little bit of work done, Johnny's ready. But we're not going on the single leg first. Who wants to try X-band squat? Here, yeah, I think this is pitch. I think this should, this should be quite <coughs> strong. This goes across here onto one shoulder. This goes across onto the other shoulder and the next. Okay? And the end is very good for the players. Be strong. Is that enough? Push. Over. Yeah. Next band squat. So you're limited. You've only got a couple of bands. You've had enough time. He's coming back from England. You don't want to go these spines. Do you play with me? Yeah. He's in the front row. In the front row. Up position. No, my athlete. 
He's doing this. Oh, lots in the game. He's spoiling the whole. Tired, stiff, sore. Okay? You don't want to know if you're in a training camp, you want to keep you fresh for the next day. You just want to get a little bit of power work done, a little bit of strength work done. Hands come up here just for safety for the bar, for squat. I want you to drop down and drive out of the squat. Drive up. Okay, drop down. Drive up, push. Come on, drive up. Push really good. Drive up. Push and relax. Okay, and that's the light for you. I think you need to be with for the big daddy band here. Four. Oh, just an example of what we can do. Might sound ridiculous, trust me. These guys, you add, you add one of them inside, now you're talking about proper resistance. And if he's not careful, he's like this. The band is pulling him down straight away. The band is unforgiving. Okay? That's our X-band squat. Take it off. Come on, thanks. Would you use that as a corrective exercise? Use that as a corrective exercise. Lovely corrective exercise. See? Okay, that's not, that was a bit like you. Do you mind using I'm gonna, I don't mind staying on this for a second. Can you try these? This is proper resistance that he can do now. Just, just, just with regards to the corrective exercise there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly the correction with the band in the next band. And this, yeah. posture, knees, and tempo. So if he's a good athlete, but he's getting sloppy with his heavy squats, and he's injured, he's sore back up. Now you can teach him. That band, if you want to try this, those bands are pulling you into the floor. His, his body wants to give up here. His, yeah, and your, your core is this, your trunk, trunk stability is strong. Open your knees now. The bands will actually help you open your knees as well. Strong. Sit, drive up. Ah, uh, now we're fine. Sit, drive up. Sit, drive up. And relax. Good. Okay? Different story. If you get sloppy with that, that pulls you down. As a corrective, it's great for posh, spine alignment. Now, your squatting technique was good. The band actually pulled you into position, opened up your hips, and then you're driving out to so create that exhaust tempo as well. Come on, you take that off. That's the squat progression. Now, you can keep adding to that. You can put a hundred more exercises on the bottom of that. There's a selection of what we do with our boys, using various different modes. I have access to, I have access to broomsticks, bars, squat racks, kettlebells, dumbbells. People love the goblet squat with the dumbbell. Lovely exercise. Kettlebell, goblet squat. Lovely exercise. I'm talking here, you don't have those things. What do you do? So I'm trying to make this real to some of your guys' situation when you're on a pitch. And if you can convince whoever's hiring you to get a couple of bands, you can do so much work with these. I don't make these or sell these, by the way. I'm not getting any money for this. But these things are just so, nowadays, are so useful. And just, don't worry about the brand. These are Jump Stretch, one of the original band makers, don't mind the band, the brand. If you're a professional, using them long, all the time, yeah, but they're, they wear out anyway, they're rubber. So a boy, cheap and cheerful said, can go a long way to help you with body weight exercises. Now I'm gonna skip on to single leg exercises. So the first one we teach, we've done our fencing. So they know how to lunge, the little boys. Now I don't correct that too much, not with the nine, ten, eleven. I don't be going, oh no, hold up, oh, 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 stay now, drop your back knee, keep your legs straight, no. We let them play with that a little bit. And we give them little foam swords and we mess about. We just do a little bit of teach them that forward lunge plan. When it gets a little bit more formal, we go back to split leg lunge, split leg squat. This is the first of my split leg variation. So if you all want to, whoever's keen to get involved here, get into a split leg squat. This is my first variation. Again, just for posture, this is nice. This is lazy. Prisoner, prisoner lunge. Drop that back knee to the floor. Just drop the back knee. Don't concentrate on anything else. Back knee down, back knee up. Straight up, down. Head to the floor. Head to the roof. Two five left, five right. As we're going around, we're watching the young boys for stability. So don't push forward. Drop down. There you go. Keep that. Yeah. Drop. Let's see what's happening now. Good boy. And up. You don't need to touch the floor. There's some close. Good. And up, good, change. Just a couple each, left, right. Yeah, just a couple left, couple right. This is a good example. This boy's good, he's growing though. So, a little bit unstable. So I'm gonna correct that in one little word, right? This is your train track. I want you to stand on the left beside me, right across from me here. Okay, there's your train track. Keep that foot there, that doesn't move. Now slide the other one back, slide it back. Oh, it's gone behind you, slide it back. Look behind you, this needs to go parallel. You understand what parallel means? So you pretend there's an imaginary line parallel. Okay, let's give the boy a coaching aid, okay? 
There's parallel. Now we've got train tracks. Your stick can't move, your foot can't move away from that train track. Now drop your lunge down. And up. Good boy. Drop down. And up. Drop down. And up. Drop down. And up. Relax. See how hard he is? How hard he's fighting to keep stable. How's that on your ankles and knees? You okay? Good boy. You're done. Good man. Good. Big round of applause. That's very good. So he was fighting hard. That little foot didn't want to touch that stick. You can see the foot fighting. Whereas a minute ago, he was just losing a little bit of balance, looking for space. Okay? That's very good. Next one for this, if they're good at this, if that's stable and strong. Yeah, you can load this again. You can load it again. I'm just talking about body weight impressions. <coughs> Rear foot is elevated. Yeah? Rear foot elevated. Or what they call Bulgarian split squat. Bulgarian, it must be good, it must be fairly aggressive. By the way, there's the, the Polish uh, split squat as well. There's a the Polish good morning. Try that someday. Foot up the bench. Good mornings. Okay, we'll have to come up with something Irish, but Polish, Bulgarian, the Russian, Russian boxer, Russian twist. It must be good, it's got big names. Rear elevated split squat. Bulgarian split squat. Laces on a bench. Yeah, you can put your toe up. I don't see any point in that. That's just unstable and unbalanced. Laces on a bench. Have you done this yet? Yeah? Do you want to try it? It's a great hip flexor stretch. It's a lovely, I use it as a setting movement. If we can get some of those steps out, please. Okay. What this will do is, I use this in the warm up too. So some of these exercises are body weight progression, but they also become, as you get a little bit more advanced, what is a session or an exercise that develops strength and power can actually become a warm up too. So I use this for very bad hip flexors to open up my hips. I'm looking to get that back knee down and up. I'm trying to work on my stability. Okay? Can I change over? So anyone want to give it up? We're going on this floor. After we do it too close, have some of our athletes that put their toes up. Toe is fine. Toe is fine, but it's just, just awkward. Just delays. Point out that toe. You're not trying to stretch out your calf and back. You're trying to develop hip flexor strength by that. The next variation that, one thing to do that. Now what I'm saying, they can do that for how many? Why say six to eight? For body weight, once you're up to about eight, good, stable, and six ones. Then we move them on and challenge them. Six to eight, it's a nice number, it's not too many, it's not too little. Okay, and if you start getting too little, they start getting bored, and then you want to load too soon. Okay, six to eight. The next one is the front elevated split squat. This is a different animal altogether. Who is on this one? Yeah, the foot of the rear elevated. They've done it themselves, yeah. Now let's try the front end of it. We just go a little bit lower for this before we come. It's probably a bit high. Oh, yeah, it's a way to lead it. It's all the lead. Stop. Back knee down. Oh, push straight up there. Yeah, don't push back. Straight up. Up this way. That is very challenging. Boy. Range of motion and balance, yeah. And that's probably a bit high. I've kids there. If you look like a fit, strong guy, so a challenger, yeah. I would start half of that height for younger athletes and smaller athletes, yeah. You actually sometimes only need the platform, you only need a couple of inches because you're increasing the range of motion. So, how you progress the exercise is you make it unstable, you lower it, or you increase the range of motion. What I'm doing there is I'm increasing the range of motion. But that's much harder. You sound very deep. deep, deep. Yeah. That's your pressure. Uh, yeah. That's actually, I had, a, I had another variation of mine doing that, which is the same person, the grip a little bit, but then you put your foot put on the step to increase your range of motion. Yeah. yeah. Now, I'm just wondering what you're going to do. No, you're no, in, in. That's what I'm saying. There's your individual stuff. There's your individual. Like, I, my index isn't 40 roaches set in stone, the Ten Commandments you must follow. That's. So the back foot is up on the. Yeah. 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 So there's a few ideas. That's yeah. lovely. Yeah, you increase the massive range then. I'd imagine you need to be solid to do that. It's, Good. Yeah, it's okay. And you don't need a lot of weight there. Exactly. You don't need a lot of weight there. Are we still talking 9, 10, 11 year olds? Oh, we've gone in 12, 13, 14. Yeah. No, no, yeah, 12, 13, 14. 9, 10, 11 are my warm ups. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 9, 10, 11 are my warm ups. And we do our little lunges. We don't, we don't do. We don't do. <laughs> This is not, this is, now we're talking under 12, 11, not, now, I don't know about it, trust me, I only do this for a long time. <laughs> then we can progress on to What I'm showing is you don't need resistance, you don't need, sorry, here's resistance training. You're challenging range of motion, 
and um, different things there without having to add load. And we're working with female athletes here. Yeah. Female athletes. And I'm not disrespecting females, I've worked with some females in the past who love load, who want to load, see the benefit of the load. Some females who take time, and some young boys take time to persuade them you need to, you need to go a little heavier. Then. So, what do you do? You trick them. <laughs> trick them into changing the range of motion, changing the intensity of the experts. That's where you need that progression. That makes sense? Now, that's split leg. You can become really fancy here with it. You can go, some of my 16 year olds are pretty stable and pretty strong. We go from there to a jump. We go there to a jump. Okay, so we're, they can move on. Some of them. So that's where the individ individual difference comes. If I might be training with you, say me, because they want to train their body. If you're not ready for that, what you have to do the range, you have to do the spit squat. But I'm doing the jumps. Or I'm doing less reps. Of a higher box in the front. That's how you go for the individual. Then we want our set up patterns. And it's actually lovely, really. So the set up patterns, we're on the single leg again. We fell through these. Okay, can you just give you ideas? Again, the list can be massive. Sorry, what time is it? Sorry. Go on, sorry. 11 o'clock, please. Finish. So, step up, traditional step up. And I'm not talking step up, okay? which I taught for many years ago, I'm not mocking step up. Step up. You either step onto the box, we teach them to step on first, and just try up, okay? We teach that first, base, just step on, push through the lead foot, up through the box. That sounds easy, that sounds, yeah, that's fine. Okay, what height should my step be? There's not a trick question, what do you think the height should be? Roughly 90 degrees of your knee, yeah, that's a good range. And that's a bit higher for me, isn't it? Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty stable, so that's a little bit higher for me, I'm okay. But you'd have a box close to, or a little bit below, it always started a little bit more cautious. By the way, the step up. Step up. Next to single leg RDL, which we're going on to, is one of my favourite exercises for leg development. Because you get a lot of stuff in it. It's dynamic, you need to be mobile, particularly a high box step up. This, for me, wouldn't be considered high box, maybe there, okay? But it's, I'd say, a little bit above normal step up. I need to have mobility. I need to have flexibility, I need to have dynamic stability because I'm moving, okay? I'm producing force, okay, and I'm producing it quickly. Okay? So that can be for me a really, really beneficial exercise. Okay? What you're looking for here is if the box is too high or they don't have the hip range, they're gonna be leaning in, aren't they? They're gonna flex here at the spine because they can't. Okay, I've seen this done in lots of gyms, big boys, big girls who want to get strong really quickly. Too heavy, off they go crawling up onto the box, there's no extension. We step up to extend, lead foot. Step up to extend, okay? So, step up, first variation. Again, you can add weight, forget that, we're doing body weight first, okay? Next variation, it's a nice, nice exercise, because this is dynamic, there's a little bit of momentum here, yeah? So I'm using a little bit of momentum here. By the way, sports people love this one too, because it looks a bit specific, it's like, you do running action, you can do what you want. Put a little bungee cord on, oh, it's resistant running, it's lovely. You can sell leg strength here <laughs> better with a lot of athletes than you can by going, come on, Jimmy, it's on you. Okay? You can sell this a little bit better sometimes if you're having trouble with an athlete who is afraid to load or is maybe not comfortable with loading. Okay? This is a lovely one. Start. Like we all start like this. This is the next progression where you start to put on the step. Okay? What's the biggest flaw of what I'm going to do here. What do you think I'm going to use to get up here? Yeah. Push off that big calf on the back foot. Yeah? How do I eliminate that? And wait. That's the the front foot. So I lean in. I get tall and I hold. And I hold. And I push. Okay, lean in. Lean in. Just drop forward. Or you can use a stick for posture. Okay, lean out of the seat, push, back down. Okay, so it's called a lean in, step up, <coughs> left, right, yeah? Okay, single leg stuff, single leg variations are, I'll go on to sets of reps in a minute upstairs, single leg variations, any age athlete, I don't care if they're 21, 22, he, might, you, he or she might be quite strong here, and if you haven't done a lot of single leg stuff, it's very challenging. So I go six, eight. I never go any higher than eight reps in single leg stuff. Unless you're working with high level endurance athletes who come back from injury. 
I'll be going six, eight reps, single leg, sometimes below. Okay. The next one on this, you'd add, or you now I've increased range of motion. So I'm high. I've taken out the dynamic movement. So I've taken out the, inert, the inertia. Now I'm just going to add stability. So I'm going to drive, push, and hold. Come back down. I saw my leg doing a lot of work there. Lean, push, back down and hold. I can add in arm action. Hold, yeah? Now I'm making it a little bit more specific. But all the time, in you go. Lean, push. Because if I do this too quick, this is what it becomes. Okay? You can cause a big stress response in your lower back. Then your coach is going, my sprinter can't sprint now, he's got a sore back. Do it with control, stability, okay? And then you can go left leg, obviously, change over. The next one on this, nice little pattern for a little bit more advanced action. I start with a step up, and then I go reverse back into a lunge. Up, 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 hold, all the time control. Tell you, by the time you do eight of them, or legs are moving. Who wants to try eight of them left, eight of them right? Who are you? Here you go. Eight left, eight right. <laughs> now I give you a little bit fair here, that's no possible. <laughs> Um, start to start, step up, high knee, step up, try, hook, fall, step up, step up, first, step up, try, hook, high knee, back, step down, step back, and here you go, push. Come to a little bit aerobic, a little bit dancing. Do it with control and two, five kilo dumbbells. That will challenge any uh, control. But see, it's getting a little tired now. He's having to look, he's having to look for space behind him. Come on, I won't, I won't pitch you anymore. <laughs> so there's your split leg variations. There's hundreds of them, there's hundreds of them. You can go over the box, okay? You can go sideways, which is a nice one for ACL type stuff. Bungee cord here, someone pulling a bungee. Oh, okay? Side stuff, you do loads of this, you can do. One of the best ones that we don't do is a step down. We're all worried about yeah, macho stuff in the, in the mirror. Boom! You're down on the box, big weight. Yeah, get really strong. Okay? Do you want to come up here? Try step down. Just this. Just drop your foot down. And then try to stand up again. Don't touch your hands until you feel the tank down. Just get the box to your toe. Sit. 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 Up. Very good. Try the other leg. And you can go as low as you want here. That is very hard. Set down with very hard. Stop. 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 All the line up with the knee control. And drive up. Good. Very good. Relax. Very good. Okay? Step down. It's another progression. So, squats, split leg squats. Lunge progressions. Yeah? So that moves on to our lunge progression. So we've done our fencing. Our little boys. We've done split leg swatch, which is stationary long green, isn't it? Just call it split leg swatch. Then we take stability out of it and we make it dynamic. Then we start running forward and back. And then this becomes a little bit of a challenge. Okay, so we've gone from split leg swatch. Now artists and step ups, they are step up variations. They can all be intermixed, by the way. You don't have to just do squat, then think that they can be clear. You do that forward and do reverse. So we practice forward forces and everything. Forward lunges, then we do reverse lunges, then we do lateral lunges. Everyone does wrong. The coach is fine with these ones. We do this. Yeah, go so drawing stretch. Okay, put on there, boys, stretch. That's stretch there. Yeah, and that's when we do this. We do it wrong. Okay, so those who are participating, let's do some lunges. We don't need a box of lunges. And shake. Four left forward. Nice soft push. Don't get lazy on the ground. We're not doing this. Four. So, you're 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You're a bit unruly. You're messing about. Hormones racing in your body. All you want to do is talk about school and stuff. Okay, I'm just going to get wobbly. You couldn't be bothered. Now I need to challenge you. Okay, so forward on your gosh. It's another. See that knee. Okay, you were good. You were good in this. You were concentrating. Now that knee is starting to drift all over the place. Now I'm going to challenge you. Now you. Okay, so I'm going to progress. I haven't put this on my list, I just call it right there. 
So step into that. One leg forward. Oh, sorry, no. Right, yeah. Sorry, sorry. So if you can face that with your right, right leg forward. Okay, yeah, yeah, right leg forward. So put this on your right. Yeah. No. Physio told me this was a little off this. So step back into the sixth one. So watch your front knee. Now drop down and up. Drop down and up. Drop down and up. I've made this probably 30% more difficult by just pulling these knees towards me. What am I doing there? Making that clear to me. Sorry. I gave you a lot of resistance there, that was good. From the front, was there a little bit of, <coughs> bit of movement? Was he alright? Was he stable? So, you're looking for time, you haven't got time. Not to do the glutes. All the glutes aren't firing, they're pulling their hands. Put a band around your knee with your glute walks, with your plans, we mobilise you everything. You're 20 minutes on that. <laughs> you're 30 minutes on that to get stuff done. Okay, you're getting a lovely, lovely straight motor control pattern there with the glute and external rotation. Okay, I just wanted to throw that in there, I forgot to show you that. That's what's called a band resistant fit lunge. Okay, next one, reverse lunge. This is a difficult one. Why? Because you can't see space. Can't find what's behind you. Trust yourself. Step. Now, let's go. Five left, five right. You'll find actually, when you start doing this, they feel much better than forward. You're actually overreaching. You'll probably get into a very good position. The forward one you can get a little bit lazy sometimes, you can get a little bit shy. Okay? Nice big reach. And relax. So we're tomorrow, right? <laughs> Then we go on to lateral lunge. Now these are all exercises you've seen before. This is just a progression. You do what you want with them, there's probably thousand versions of it. Okay? Lateral lunge. Feet stay pointing in the same direction. I step out. Left leg is straight, right leg is bent. I try and touch my bum off my right heel. I push back. Okay, it's not really static first, really controlled. Yeah, keep everything flat, pointing forward. Flat, pointing forward. You know, if you overreach, your foot will come up. Hmm? Just do three or four, because you're doing another reps now. You probably got 200 reps on the distance. So, relax. Just, just see it, right? Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, Avoid. Avoid. Like, well, it's a groin stretch. Right. Well, let's do the groin boys. Grinders. We call these grinders. They love the groin stretch. As a groin stretch, you just do this. Usually, or the knee lean. No. If you do all, let's get the groin stretch on here, boys. Uh, <laughs> straight away, they're moving, and it's dynamic. You're actually working quite hard to push back because then we make this dynamic. This is easy. That's not easy, but this is a nice stretch. Yeah. Nice little stretch. We make this more dynamic. That will work. Push off the leg. Don't lean into the straight leg. Push off the leg at squats. Then okay, clear. Once you overreach, you're going to are not responsible for anyone's osteo excuses. Okay? Or getting more dry or issues. Just, yeah, relax. So, done. Okay? There's intensity. Raise intensity again. Boys, groin stretches are good. We're going to a bit more dynamic now. Add a jump to anything. <laughs> It goes up 24. Okay, you get buoyant. Oh, I don't want to touch weights. Let's stretch out those groins. Let's make them dynamically stable, not strong. Dynamically stable. We don't call our programs strength and conditioning programs. We call them athletic development programs. And it's an actual, an actual fact. If you say lots of studies have been done in the states with collegiate athletes about buoyant from programs and so If you say the word strength and conditioning program, the 20% for the jocks. <laughs> They buy it. Oh, beautiful. Thank you The other 80% of the athletes, the sprinters, the figure skaters, the cheerleaders, the hockey players, soccer players, frisbee. Ooh, stunning addition. If you say athletic development, or call it athletic development program, you get buy in by up to 60% more. It's a fact. And they've done more studies on injury prevention. So if I call it an injury prevention program, you go, oh, I think that's going to be the fluffy stuff. So the, the, the big people again, fluffy stuff. I'm not going to be. Walk around my bands, do my monster walks, do my static stuff, close my eyes. So not doing that. If you say this is performance enhancement preparation, performance enhancement preparation. Oh, 
Yeah, stability. Come on, you need to get ready for your squats. Or you need to get ready for your athletic development. They get buy-in again, okay? So it's the terminology. I'm not saying the injury prevention program is wrong. I use injury prevention. When you have a lot of injured guys here with injury prevention, then they go, oh, yeah. <laughs> but you get buy-in from rewarding means. So you need to find out what your athlete misses. That. Now we're going to take this around the world. We're going on a little dance here. We're going to go forward, we go side, we're going to go behind. Okay? That's a clock lunge. Clock lunge can be 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You can go any direction you want. You play with this. Our little boys love this. I actually do some of this with 12, 13 year olds. I get dead my boss. I used to draw a big circle on the grass, I got in trouble. And um, I want to get a big board made with a clock on it. And literally have to go to the back. Three, back. Okay? Get them dynamically moving through your hips. And there's your strength and conditioning for your hips. Okay, do. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, right. One, two, three, four, five, six, left. And you're off you go. You'll find the old, uh, the old five o'clock is weird. Yeah. <laughs> what way you go back? You go back into a locker. Yeah. Okay. This, the five o'clock goes back and the front foot points up. Sorry, I never showed you that. Five o'clock. A little bit Kung Fu ish. Takes it up. So there's your clock lunge, there's your lunging patterns, and you can add all sorts of stuff to that. You can have a stick on your head, which we do to teach split leg squats. We can keep, I find a little stick across the back with this is very good for posture. Keep the stick square, lads, don't even move. Don't even move, I don't want to see that stick going up or down. And you're getting a little bit of posture and stuff in there as well. You can add a ball overhead, you can add a ball twist, looking for everything to remain straight. You can play with that whatever way you want. You can progress that a hundred ways. You don't need a lot of equipment. And for real strength development, as you athlete progresses, then you start adding dumbbells and barbells. You start doing walking lunges. So there is one little lunge you might have seen. I really like it. came across the coil back. I can't even remember where. Who wants to try this? Three, four, three, four, one. Well, you start on this line. This is called a toe touch. TT lunge. The Audi TT. Okay? I want you to start on your toes. And I want you to do walking lunges all the way down as far as Luke. Staying on your toes. I do not want to see that being drop. Don't forget your lunging pattern now. Posture. Drive up off the drive up before you go forward. Drive up to go forward. Drive up to go forward. Sorry, I've created a roadblock there. Go on, keep going over the bands. There, good. <laughs> And relax. So there's a different level again. So you don't even need weight, okay? Because you can do walking lunges. We get a little bit lazy. Okay, you add a toe on the back. You get to drive off that toe up. Okay, get a lot of angle in your back. Okay, so you foot development as well as actually shift the big BMO there. Why are we getting a bit more movement around our knees? Why are we getting a little bit more strength in our knees? Because this, you're on stage. Yeah, so there's not much, you have the foot, you're not planted. This is easy. That's easy. It's secure. I'm on my toes, shit. Sure. Okay? Are you only pushing off your toe or are you on your toe all the time? On your toe all the time. That heel never yeah. touches the ground. Yeah. Now, the traditional walking lunge is the front foot is planted. But that's just a variation. Oh, TT lunges. Half set of the work, foot gets to the work, and you don't work. Feet, you don't work our feet. There we go. Do that barefoot in sand. So he waits. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you a five minute break. I'm going to come back in and we're going to look at the hip page and upper body. Because we're running out of time and I'm putting through a lot of stuff. So, five minutes. Back here, five minutes. Okay. Yeah.